Miss Georgia. And yeah, basically you're in Warsaw in school uniform because like school's just finished. We're gonna play, what is it? Katie B's on the mission. Yeah, by Katie B. In the summer darkness, I ain't undercover. Georgia Smith was discovered at age 15 when a music manager discovered her singing on YouTube. Originally coming from humble Walsall in the West Midlands, she started making trips up to the big city to work with the likes of Maverick Sabre, the most mythical sounding washed up musician in London. Eventually she moved up to London full time and worked as a barista in Starbucks whilst continuing to write songs with hopes of one day striking it venti, I mean big. In January 2016, she started releasing music properly and dropped her first serious single, Blue Lights, which ended up racking over 400 thousand views on YouTube in the first month. But apparently it was her second single, Where Did I Go?, that caught the attention of Drizzy Drake, who named it as his favourite track of the month in an interview with Entertainment Weekly. Long before proclaiming on his verse on Travis Scott's Seco Mode that he would pop a Zan to get through long haul flights, he said that it was George's music that had kept him sane on an 18 hour plane journey. So after discovering George's potential, the vulture of culture was circling. In fact, this was only a few months after Drake had hopped on fellow British teenager Dave's track, Wanna Know. Drake's job is basically to scour the globe looking for young, impressionable teenagers whose hopes and dreams he can harvest for his own gratification. He's like an auto-tuned Jeffrey Epstein. All right, it's not really fair to compare Drake to Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, it's not like he's got his own play. Oh. Anyway, Drake and Georgia Smith eventually did two songs together for his More Life playlist. The Georgia interlude, pretty self-explanatory, an interlude with Georgia, but also the track Get It Together. That song itself had a pretty interesting history because it had previously been teased with a feature from the original owner of Expensive Butts and original Drake fuck girl, Jennifer Lopez. Now, Drake had been trying to smash J-Lo for years because she'd been his childhood crush. Lucky man, because by the time that I get a chance to nail any of my childhood crushes, I'll probably be getting done for necrophilia. Just hang in there for me, Kelly. Drake was first spotted fangirling Jennifer Lopez in December of 2016, when he was spotted in the crowd at her Las Vegas show, vibing out a little too hard before getting noticed and toning it down. I'm sorry, but I've never seen Drake look more like Adam Sandler in my life. Grammy for the Sandman. J-Lo reciprocated the enthusiasm on Instagram in a post afterwards saying how much she loved him. And it didn't take long for rumours to spread that Drake and J-Lo, or Dre-Lo, had been dating. After more cutesy pics of them clout snuggling up on a couch appeared on Instagram. She even cancelled her own New Year's Eve performance in Miami to go and party with Drake at his in Vegas. They were also spotted at a Winter Wonderland ball winning King and Queen of the Dance. King and Queen of the Though, given their age differences, you would be forgiven for thinking this was a clip of Drake's mum picking him up from prom. But later in that party, an early clip of the song Get It Together was played featuring J-Lo and not the Georgia Smith verse that later appeared on the record. From here, whispers begun to circulate that Drake was falling for J-Lo, especially after he dropped a hundred grand on this diamond Tiffany necklace that she was spotted wearing. Hell, he even met her kids. J-Lo later went on Ellen's show saying that they did have a song together, but that she didn't know what Drake was gonna do with it. Did y'all really ever write a song together? Yes. Yes, we did. Oh, you did? He, actually, he sent me a song that he wanted me to be on, and then I got on the song, and right. yeah, so we have a song together. Yeah, so I don't know what he's gonna do with it, but yeah. Yeah. He'll do fucking nothing. That's right, Connor, because soon after, it emerged that Drake and J-Lo had decided to cool things off a little bit, casting doubt over whether that collaboration would ever be released. And a few emotional Instagram posts and new boyfriends later, it seemed that petty old Drake had decided to swap her in for a younger British model and put Georgia Smith on that track instead. Which was extra embarrassing, seeing as J-Lo had actually gone on Big Boy's show to do an interview where she confirmed that she was on that song by name. We did a song called Get It Together. It's a great song. I, I really love it. I'm really proud of it. Um, and and yeah, I think it's going to be on his next Oh, so y'all really did a song. I thought you were just trying to throw us like a curveball. <laughs> To be fair, even though she was left off that song, she still made a couple of sly little appearances on the More Life project, including the opening track Free Smoke that had that famous lyric where Drake talks about drunk texting J-Lo, who apparently had switched up her number on it. And he did also have a J-Lo sample on the song Teenage Fever, which many have speculated was actually about the transition between dating Rihanna to dating J-Lo. Hell, maybe he smashed just to get that sample cleared. You know my boy's a savage. So at least J-Lo got a check and an appearance on the project, but swapping her in for Georgia Smith definitely raised a few eyebrows, like this. Now, originally, Georgia Smith didn't even want to appear on this track. As she's revealed in several interviews following the release of the song, she said that because she hadn't personally written the lyrics, she didn't feel like she could really connect with the song. Hey, doesn't bother Drake. But between first receiving that song and eventually deciding to work on it, Georgia Smith broke up with her boyfriend and suddenly had a change of heart and decided to work with Drake. I wonder why. 
Now, Georgia Smith performed as a guest at Drake's 2017 Boy Meets World Tour twice. Once on February 23rd at the Barclay Card Arena in Birmingham, and this was in the lead up to his More Life project that would be released a few weeks after this performance. Then she appeared again on March 20th at London's O2 Arena, post-release. Surprising, seeing as Drake usually severs all ties with women post-release. Now, it's unclear exactly when their relationship started. It could have been before the big album placements. It could have been the same time they started collaborating. It could have been any time between those on-stage guest spots, or it could have been at any point that Drake was gushing over Georgia's Instagram. But perhaps it was days after that original Georgia appearance at the Birmingham Arena in February when pictures emerged of Drake popping in the local co-op in Warsaw to buy sweets with Georgia. Damn, Drizzy knows how to treat him. Maybe that's why J-Lo left his ass. She's more of a waitrose bay. And we even later got a hint that Drake had actually gone to Georgia's family home whilst he was in her town. But it was in early 2017 that the newspapers started to speculate that things between Drake and Georgia had gone a little bit beyond a fling. Many had been suggesting that they had got together in secret and eventually another room started circulating, suggesting that she had been telling friends that things were definitely serious between them. But to be fair to them, they had managed to keep things very tight-lipped behind the scenes, and no one really knew what was going on between Drake and Georgia. And even though as late as August of 2017, Drake was on stage with Georgia, gushing like a smitten kitten. Probably one of the most incredible voices, incredible talents, and incredible people that I've ever met, so. Make some noise for Georgia Smith. I go by the name of Drake. Thank you for having me. Only a month after, in September, it had emerged that Drake and Georgia had split and she had moved on to a new man. At the time, things were kept very hush and no one would really know what had happened between them until a year later when Drake gave us a clue, releasing a song that was so salty I got high blood pressure just listening to it. Now, a snippet of another Drake and Georgia track called I Could Never has been floating around for a while. This is thought to have been an offcut originally intended for Drake's Scorpion album, which was scrapped after these two had fell out. Because when Scorpion did drop, there was no Georgia collaboration in sight, but it did feature a track called Jaded. On the track Jaded, Drake seems to go in detail about a failed romance with an unnamed woman. And though he doesn't mention Georgia by name, the track has some lines that seem pretty pointed at her, especially references to the woman's young age and her meteoric rise to fame after their split. Drake seems to suggest that this woman was just using him to further her career and then dipping from his life when she got all the clout tokens that she'd needed. And she's even said it herself in interviews, whilst on the one hand denying anything happened between her and Drake, but on the other saying that their collaboration was the way that tons of her fans found out about her. But assuming it is about Georgia, that song reveals several other spicy little tidbits of information, including the fact that apparently she had done the dumping by text. Damn, imagine dumping Drake through text. Happens to the best of us. He even referenced the long ass journey that he'd had to make to go and visit her parents in her hometown. I'm guessing this references that trip to Warsaw, which I'm assuming he didn't just do to go to the co-op and buy Twixes. He also references an 11 tattoo that he got that apparently represents Georgia Smith's birthday. And she has one too, presumably, so she doesn't forget her own birthday. Her famous 11 is also referenced in her first EP, Project 11. Good marketing, Georgia. I mean, who needs a flashy billboard on Sunset Boulevard when you can promote your album on the fleshy part of a fuckboy's arm? Drake also referenced this regrettable decision to get that tattoo on the track March 14th on Scorpion, where he says to his son, he got this 11 tatted for someone else, but now it's for him. Well, Drake, my birthday is actually on the 6th, so it sounds like you named your whole six god shit after your boy Traplot. Getting under your skin yet, Drake? I'll keep trying. But Drake's savage lines were far from over at this point. He even took aim at her post-Drake rebound boyfriend that she'd been dating since September 2017, Joel Compass. A fitting name for somebody so unknown, you'd need a compass just to find anything the guys worked on. And Drake duly put the boot in, saying, how does your new man do what I do for a living, but is way less wavy? I'm sorry, Georgia, but you are truly tripping, snaking Drake to go and get with this guy. I mean, he looks like a pantomime Chris Brown. Drake saying this guy is way less wavy is an understatement. His biggest solo hit was Forgive Me in 2014, which hasn't even clocked a million views on YouTube to this day. I mean, Drake has more slaps than the Beatles. This guy looks like he should be selling used VW Beatles. And to add insult to injury, ever since this song came out, trolls have been targeting both Joel and Georgia's social media accounts with comments of way less wavy, including one particular Instagram clip that Georgia shared of them both snuggling up at the Sainsbury self-checkout counter. Damn, this chick just can't get enough of supermarket dates. And so while Georgia and Joel Compass were dating since September 2017 and rumors of an engagement were going around, they eventually split up, initially parting ways because she had planned to tour America. I guess she was looking for more of a Walmart kind of guy. And that split inspired Georgia's song, The One, which was actually written by both her and Joel, who produced it, before going on to patch things up for a little bit, eventually being seen at the Grammys together. They eventually split up for good, and in 2019, interestingly, rumors begun circulating that Georgia had actually been caught kissing Kanye West backup dancer Stormzy. Stormzy and Georgia had actually worked together on the song Let Me Down, which is a very deep and complex song, which might be hard for some of Stormzy's listeners to understand, but thankfully, she's explained it in detail for us. For anyone that doesn't know what the song's about, can you kind of explain what the 
well, meaning is? I mean, yeah, let me down is just basically about if you love or care for someone so much, but all they can do is let you down. Wow, deep man. Supposedly, that rumoured kiss is actually what led to Stormzy breaking up with his long-term girlfriend and radio queen Maya Jammer. Though their reps have denied this, saying that they ended their four-year relationship to focus on their careers. I assume what she really meant was how her already mature career would be much better off without the aggro of a cheating backup dancer. But let's be real, a lot of this information has come from gossip rags, so who knows really how much truth there is in all of this information. But there's only one thing for sure. After already getting dubbed by JLo, Drake moved on to a mystery woman who seemingly left him very jaded and all signs point to that woman being Georgia Smith. And it was actually Drake's arch nemesis Toe Budden who seemed to have a very accurate breakdown of that song on his podcast. I think this record just really speaks to the gift and the curse that is really young vagina. Of age, of course, okay. but young is 21. Yeah, it is. 20. And I feel like this record is about how some very, very, very young woman out there really toyed with Drake's heart. It's about Georgia Smith, yes? I don't know. I mean, to be fair, Georgia was 19 and Drake 30 at the time. There's nothing legally wrong with that, but we do know that Drake has a penchant for falling in love with questionable teenage chicks. And whilst defending your relationship with a much younger girl as legal is completely fair, it does have a bit of a stink to it. Interlude or whatever that was on that Drake album. Come on, Maul. Come on. <laughs> you got what you needed from Drake. <laughs> and you left. I think Drake was just looking at a young chick that he wanted to fuck. And we're just rolling with some shit that his better judgment told him told him better than. But hey, I'm sure that Drake will move on from this having learned a lesson and he will no longer waste his time chasing around much younger women who have far too much going on in their lives to... Oh. Hope you enjoyed that video. Show some love to the channel by heading over to traplaw.com and copying some of these fat sexy pieces of merch that I've created for y'all. I appreciate the support of everybody that's been copying stuff. Make sure that you hit me up on Instagram at TrapLawRoss to show me anything that you've bought or to just share some love that you have for the channel. As always, make sure that you like, subscribe and comment below. Let me know what you thought. Smash that like button and show some love down there. Appreciate everybody that's been riding with me. Thank you so much for your support and for watching. And until next time, a peace out.